Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, September 4th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are joined here in the studio by the wonderful content producer, Caitlin Moynihan. Hey. She has a new backlight today. She does. People watching She's backlit. Thank like, you look so much. Radiant. And hey, over there. who's our guest today? We have a very special guest, a Broadway legend, Louis J. Stadlin. From the hilarious. The, yes, Louis from J. the Hello Stadlin. Dolly Tour is joining us to talk in a little bit. But first, let's get to today's topic. A new baker starting her first shift at the diner tonight. Nicolette Robinson, Broadway, Broadway debut, debut tonight yes. at the yeah at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. We're very Congrats. excited to see her as Jenna, mm-hmm. in waitress, uh, the first actress of color. She in, is in the role. Yes. Very exciting. Yeah, very um, exciting. Obviously, Catherine McPhee did it over the summer, yep. and uh, Stephanie Torns has been doing it. Yep, sort Betsy of. Wolf. Yep. 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 Uh, and, but Nicolette has been seen off Broadway, but yes. never I on Broadway. I loved her in Brooklyn Night. Did you see that show? Who doesn't? Like I love. But yeah, Brooklyn Nights is great. Yes. With it was Matt so Doyle. good. That, yeah, that's a, that was actually a great show. What it was such a great show. I don't know. It kind of like came and went, and I thought there would be more, but no. More importantly, she's on Broadway. But now she's, she's on waitress. Broadway. Yes. Uh, so tonight is the very first performance. She will be in it through October 28th, and we can't wait to see her. I can't wait to go. And a Broadway favorite is doing a one night only benefit concert. Yes. The one and only Sutton Foster for one night is doing my one and only. Ooh. Oh, look yes! Wow. Look at okay. all that. Yes, two-time Tony winner is going to do this one-night benefit performance of the Gershwin musical. Um, Rob Ashford will direct and choreograph the production, and it's being put on by Roundabout Theater Company. Which means what? Which means that it will be on Broadway in 2019, <laughs> 2020. Well, well, this is what Roundabout no, I mean, has this. been doing. <laughs> yeah, they, no, this they is... do the so Kiss Me Kate started. Right, exactly. And what was the other one? Um, um, they do. Violet? No, was that Roundabout? No, no, no. They, they do the one night only benefits and then they bring... And then they actually bring a production, <laughs> then they bring the production. to Broadway. So we're not yes. saying it's definitely happening. No, no. But you can... This this performance, this benefit performance is definitely <laughs> happening. Um, it is happening at the Stephen Sondheim Theater, currently the home of Beautiful, the Carol King musical. And it's happening November 12th at 7.30 p.m. Additional cast and creative team members and news about a Broadway transfer <laughs> will probably <laughs> be coming <laughs> in the future. Sondheim Theater is the home yeah. of one of Sutton Foster's Tony triumphs. Yes. And anything goes. That's right. Absolutely. Of course. So it's home for her. But there's yeah. a great juicy male role in this show, too. Because originally it was Tommy Toon and Twiggy. Right. 1983, He's, the original. Pilot, this is a Gershwin right? review. Yes. About an aviator so, and a swimmer. Yes, that's right. That's and right. we don't know who the leading guy will be, but it's a it's lot a of role. dancing, a lot um, of dancing, a lot of hoofing. So it's going to be good Sutton for Sutton. Can do it. Yes, absolutely. Yay. And two members of the Dear Evan Hansen family are teaming up once again. Yes. These are the two. Mike Feist, <laughs> yes. Tony nominee Mike Get it Feist, out of the way. and Stephen and Levinson. Levinson. Tony winner Stephen mm-hmm. Levinson, yes. correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, uh, this is the new play Days of Rage. We've talked about it before. Stephen mm-hmm. Levinson wrote it, and Trip Coleman will direct it. It'll be at Second Stage Theater starting October 9th. And Mike Feist joined the cast, uh, along with Tavi Gevinson, wow. Jay Alphonse Nicholson, and Odessa Young. And this is about a bunch of college students. Yep. In the late 60s, upstate, upstate, upstate yes, upstate that's the New sign York. for upstate. Upstate, upstate is great. Is great. <laughs> uh, and that's where uh, it's all about, it's sort of like a radical time Absolutely. and we'll war, see what happens. All of that's happening. But anyway, uh, congratulations, Mike Feist. We've been yeah, kind of waiting busy, to see. That Mike yeah. Feist. You super also have that Amazon TV show. Super busy. In demand. Love it. And our original T Moon is dancing back to the island tonight. Yes, Haley Kilgore, who originally had to step out of Once on the Island for a little bit following a foot injury is fully healed, and she's headed back to the show tonight, beginning tonight. Congratulations, Haley Kilgore. Of course, the show is still playing at the Circle in the Square Theater on Broadway and is still set to launch a national tour in fall 2019. It's so great to be to have Haley back. I'm sure all of her cast members are thrilled to have her back. Of course, the L- Lauren Lott mm-hmm. replaced Haley Kilgore yeah. for a little while. I think she went to see it last night. I saw on her oh, Instagram really? yeah. she did like a curtain call video and she was cheering oh, them on adorable. from the. So I think yes. she watched it last night. She oh. was able to step in while Haley healed, and now the family is back together. So welcome back. Aww. And to finish out today, we got some sad news in Jersey. Yeah, so this was news while we were gone. Mm-hmm. Getting the band back together. The song 
Stuck in my head. Yeah. Uh, it's closing on nice. September 16th at the Blasco Theater. So what is that? Another week and a half? Yeah. 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 Next, yeah. A week from next weekend. Uh, and it will have played only 30 preview and 40 regular performances. It was kind of a short run. Yeah. Uh, great cast. Mm-hmm. And it's been a labor labor of love to get it here. So yeah. there are a lot of, lot of heart yeah. and soul. So and go talent. rock out in Jersey. We just had Mary Lou Henner here, right? We did, yeah. yeah. She was just from here the talking cast. about it. Uh, so it's your last chance to see getting the band back together. Go see it. Mm-hmm. So on that note, Paul, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, you're going to go see getting the band back Because there's a much funnier guy coming in after me. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, thank you so much. Caitlin, why don't you tell us about today's very special guest. Of course, guys. Today we have Louis J. Stadlin in the studio with us, and he's about to wow audiences across the country in the Hello Dolly National Tour. He's a Tony nominee for his work in Candide and has been in over 13 Broadway productions, including The Front Page, Fish in the Dark, The Producers, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, and The Odd Couple. He's done it all. Be sure to follow Hello Dolly on social media at Hello Dolly B Way to stay up to date on all the tour news and to leave all your questions for Louis J. Stadlin in the, qu- in the comments down below. Please welcome Ryan and Lewis. Hello there, sir. Thank you so much for coming on our Live at Five program. We're so excited to have you. We are so excited for the tour of Hello, Dolly, launching September 30th, Cleveland, Ohio, Playhouse Square. How excited are you to be a part of this production? It's great. It's it's great. And it's also so life-affirming. You know, when I'm not on stage, listening to the music and Mm -hmm. the dancing is so spectacular. And Betty Ann Buckley, I I don't usually use hyperbole, but mm-hmm. she's going to be as great a dolly as anybody. Yeah, ever. We're, we're very anxious. We're very mm-hmm. excited. How is how has it been so far working with Betty and working with Jerry Zaks, who you've worked with many times, times before? Yes. Seven times. Seven times. This is my seventh time with Jerry Zaks. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the, the last time I saw Betty, we used to go to the same psychiatrist. <laughs> And she was always coming out while I was going in. Mm-hmm. So I got the full dramatic impact of <laughs> Betty's, Betty's session. She's uh, brilliant. And, uh, yeah. and she's uh, a really, really nice person. So, yeah. uh, and that is very important when you're going to be on the road for a year. Absolutely. The, yeah. You're you're familiar with touring. This, uh, this is, I believe, your ninth. fourth tour, right? No, it's <laughs> Nine. Congratulations. What do you love? I know you love touring. Yeah. What do you love about it? What do you love about the audiences? That well, you, you know, I've done 14 Broadway shows. Mm-hmm. When you do a Broadway show, it's all part of this great conspiracy until the uh, the reviews come out. Right. And then it's a job. You know? mm. But when you do the road... Uh, the, the variety is extraordinary. You're Absolutely. in different theaters, you're in different hotels, you're searching out the restaurants and the museums, mm-hmm. and then when you get bored, you blow town. You know? Right. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> and I think there there must just be a different energy with those audiences. Do, as someone who grew up with watching touring productions as yes. my introduction, it was such a big deal when um, I mean, the family like went all out to go do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the 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 difference between playing Baltimore mm-hmm. and then thirty five miles south, Washington D.C. The the audience reaction yeah. could not be more different, and that also is kind of part of the thrill of variety. Sure. Yeah, but also the first job I ever had. I was nineteen years old. I was in the first national company of Fiddler on the Roof. Right. And it was yeah. the first time I ever felt successful as a person. Mm-hmm. So that romance with the road, I, I guess, began there. Yeah, and you held on to it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. This is also not your first time playing Horace Vandegelder. You mm-hmm. played him at the Muni in 2007. Yep. So you liked the role, clearly. <laughs> something you want. Why did you want to revisit it? Why did, you, why did you want to be a part of this production of Hello, Dolly? Well, I thought it was a great production. And I love, the ro- I, I love Horace Vandegelder. Mm-hmm. Uh, the arc of... Uh, of the performance, you know, he starts off, he's a total fool, thinks he knows everything, and uh, doesn't know that he has a heart. And then uh, throughout the play, at the very end, he discovers that not only does he have an intellect, as limited as that may be, <laughs> but that he has a heart. And that's what all of Hello, Dolly! is about, if it's about anything. It's about a group of people finding love within a 24-hour period. Mm-hmm. So. You know, these are difficult times, and uh, and that's the other thing. We're going to spread a lot of love and affirmation uh, around this country, and yeah. I think uh, it's needed. 
I was going to say, I think we I think we could all use it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Also, yeah. you starred in many Neil Simon productions yes. here on Broadway. And Four. unfortunately, we, we lost Neil Simon on August 26th. What do you remember most fondly with working with him and be, being a part of his incredible comedies? Well, it, first of all, they were... They were gifts that he yeah. bestowed on all of us. We, we, on, on any number of us went to a memorial service last Thursday, and uh, it was really beautiful in that there was no artifice. Mm -hmm. Everybody spoke from the heart. And Neil was a complicated guy. Sure. You know? uh, he, he just, uh, he, he was brilliant, and he had this self-confidence. I worked with him in four different decades. I started playing Ben Silverman in the Sunshine Boys. Right. I was, what, 26 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, then I did the female version of The Odd Couple, Laughter right. on the 23rd Floor, uh, 45 Seconds from Broadway. His self-confidence that he could throw out, he, he would say this, he would say, I'm cutting this line. And I remember Jack Albertson said, no, no, don't cut it. I've only done it once. I'll do it better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He said, no, that's a 400 person laugh. He said, and if we cut that, the next sentence will be a 1,200 seat <laughs> right, laugh, right, person absolutely. laugh. And so, he'd do it, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, he had this, this incredible confidence that he could always improve uh, what he had written. Mm -hmm. And not every playwright you know, uh, uh, w w wants to throw out some pretty brilliant stuff sure. and, and improve it. Right. So that and also Neil was a, uh, he was a franchise. So even if the reviews were not so great, you knew you were going to work for a year right. because the public you know, cared more about him than the critical establishment. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. In The New Odd Couple, you also, your co-star was Tony Shalhoub, right? That's right. Just won his first Tony Award, of mm -hmm. course, for the bands. Have you kept up with Tony? Are you still friends? We, we saw each other. No, uh, we saw each other. Uh, I was doing the Honeymooners out in Paper Mill, right, and yeah. we were rehearsing at the 42nd Street studio, and he was mm -hmm. in rehearsal, and you know, for the band's visit. Um, that was his first Broadway show. And uh, uh, it's, it's an interesting story. You don't really have time. But uh, I got the job, and then they said, would you mind uh, uh, auditioning with other people mm -hmm. to play the other brother? And I said, certainly. And Gary Beach and Tony Shalhoub were the two people who wow. obviously <laughs> were better than everybody else. And I remember the casting director, when Tony read and he left the room I said well, what about him <laughs> and, it, and the, and the uh, casting director said oh no there's no way that you could be brothers I said well what about talent does not have anything to do <laughs> I was going to say yes that, that yeah. factor into this at all um, speaking of though you showed talent um, be you began acting around 14 right your mother had a theater camp Gray Gables and you, you started acting there I believe it was initially to get the attention of women <laughs> But, you know... You've read my book. <laughs> <laughs> Acting Foolish. Amazon.com. Yes. Amazon. Right. Com. yes. Uh, published in 2009. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, that's true. And I it guess. stuck with... And, and it's still... It and even though I'm 71 years old, <laughs> I still, I still enjoy being in the presence of beautiful uh, sure. uh, uh, young women, middle-aged women. Certainly. Uh, Post-middle-aged women. <laughs> what has been the... If you had to... Be, I, don't know, I know we want to take some questions from people that are watching, but if you had to sort of look back what has been a uh, what's been the most rewarding part of where you're at now in your career and within the choices that you get to make um, you know uh, I remember my teacher Stella Adler said when I was uh, 18 years old mm -hmm. she said what do you want to be do you want to be a star or do you want to be an actor mm -hmm. and I thought well that's kind of ridiculous because if you're a star you get all the good parts right. and then about 15 years later I realized what she was talking about when I did The Producers, um, I did it on Broadway, but first I took out the First National. Right. And yep. all I wanted, I wanted all my career, I wanted to have my name above the marquee of the theater and above the title of the play. Mm -hmm. Well, I did The Producers in many, many different cities. And then after I, I did that, I thought, okay, I've done that. That's fine. But I, I, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't dedicate my entire life to stardom. Because mm -hmm. make no... Uh, you know, there's no doubt about it that that people who are stars and maintain that level mm -hmm. are people who work very hard uh, uh, about it. Right. I have a rarefied fame. 
people like you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you know, people who have seen me in the theater. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's also very nice that uh, I think I cut down on the neurotic process that a young actor mm -hmm. deals with. I remember seeing a wonderful movie. Marcello, my love, which was about Marcello Mastroianni, and Marcello Mastroianni says in the film, he said, an actor, he said, if you want to suffer, an actor should suffer when he's not working, mm -hmm. not when he is working. Right. You know? And I think that that is, you, you develop a shorthand and a craft mm -hmm. so that you just go and you do it. That doesn't mean that you're not nervous before you have to go on and perform in front of the public, but it's... Listen, uh, as a theatrical, as a theater actor, yeah. which uh, mostly I am, I've done 15 movies, but I'm a theater actor. Sure, right? absolutely, yeah. There's nothing more comforting than going out on a stage and staring into that black void, and it's like where you are most comfortable with yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, it's as you're well, a you're a force on that stage as well, so yes. we appreciate that. What would some of our viewers like to know from Lewis? Yes, so uh, George wants to know if there's a city you're most looking forward to visiting while on tour. San Francisco. Why? Chicago. Ooh. Yes. Uh, uh, Los Angeles, because my daughter and my two granddaughters, Zoe who's going to be five in a few days, mm -hmm. and Emily, who's going to be two on December 25th. I'm looking forward to spending three weeks there. Absolutely. Um, let's see, where else? I, it's a very good tour. Yeah. Uh, uh, Denver's good, although they have to put a little oxygen out there in the wings. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh. Love oh, nice. Pittsburgh. Yes. This will be the seventh time. Uh, there's nothing, you know, they can talk about Paris, but when you're coming from the airport and you drive through that, Fort Pitt Tunnel, and you see the Pittsburgh skyline. That's the most for, for an urban file. Like yeah, I, absolutely. That's one of the most yeah. beautiful sites you can find. Yeah, oh, and they're they're bridges. Yeah. It's it's such it's a great, cool city. great town. Yeah, absolutely. Great town. Yeah. I love that. So other people would like to know if there was a number you were most nervous about having to learn while in rehearsals. Uh, for this show. For this show. Uh, there is a number that was cut in the original production. Mm -hmm. David Burns, the great David Burns, who I have played many of his roles that he originated, uh, ended the first act with a, with a song called Penny in His Pocket. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, they cut it on the road because they realized, really, this, is, this play is about uh, Dolly Levi. It's Hello Dolly, not Hello Horace. You know? <laughs> so they cut it and uh, uh, before the parade passes by ends the right. number. Uh, it's a pattern number mm -hmm. in which there's a lot of words <laughs> and there's a lot of movements, you know, <laughs> and uh, so I would say that, that that's the, uh, I'm still working on it. Yeah, Warren Carlyle doesn't let anyone get off easy no. <laughs> <laughs> with the choreography of this show. I love Absolutely. that. <clears throat> oh, okay. Did you see Hello Dolly while I was on Broadway? I and did. who was your dolly? What? Who was your dolly? Who did you uh, see? I went to the opening night uh, and I saw uh, Bet. Bette Midler. We're both Fiddler on the Roof uh, babies. That's right. So, we were yeah. not in the same company, but when I left the national company, I was playing Mendel the Rabbi son, mm -hmm. and she was playing Seidel. And then we became friends, you know, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a, a short period of time when we were both young and undiscovered. I, I have to tell you this, too. Des Moines. Oh, Des Moines. Des Moines. <laughs> Des Moines. When I did Fiddler on the Roof, Des Moines was the first time I ever saw my name in the newspaper. For some reason, the critic in Des Moines singled out Louis J. Stadlin as Mendel the Rabbi's son in 1967, <laughs> and that's the first time. So I will be happy to return Aww. to Des Moines, Iowa. I like that. That's what a full speaking, circle moment. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of, are there other roles, since you, you have played Horace before, are there other roles in your oeuvre that you would like to return to, other roles that you'd like to give another try on in a new production? Do you ever think about that? or? Well, even though I know that uh, my reputation is as a comic actor, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to take a shot at Willie Loman. Yes. And I would like to take a shot at Sarah Bakoff in uh, Uncle Vanya. Yes. Uh, the other, you know, I have been blessed. I have played some really great roles. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say that in a perfect world, I would still be touring in the National Company of Guys and Dolls, directed yes. by Jerry Zaks, <laughs> playing Nathan Detroit. I, yeah. I thought that Guys and Dolls deals with the relationship between men and women on a more profound basis than practically anything in, in literature. So, I agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
And I loved playing uh, Max Bialystok. I did it 740 times. <laughs> uh, and then I got a hip replacement. Uh, but uh, I realized when, when I did that the final time, I said, fine, I did it. <laughs> and I, you know. I don't have enough energy to do it anymore. Right. Although I'm dancing around, I'm, I'm running around pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. No, yeah. and as someone, as a, as a, what I would say, as an expert um, uh, in theater and Broadway and comedy, what, what's your general idea about where things are now and where they're headed? Are you optimistic about what Broadway is and what it's becoming, or do you, are you nervous at all? Well, I looked at an old ticket of uh, uh, the Sunshine Boys on opening night, which was always an inflated ticket, and mm -hmm. they always charged a little bit more. Uh, it was $11. Oh, my gosh. This was in 1974. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So the idea that, you know, Broadway has become part of the tourist experience. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. go see two, three shows, stay in a nice hotel, go to a lot of restaurants. Absolutely. It's very healthy financially, mm -hmm. but it's become somewhat elitist, and, uh, yeah. and yeah. the uh, menu has changed, uh, mostly musicals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, did, I do think that, you know, in the 50s and 60s, during the renaissance of musical theater, they would make musical comedies based on plays like Pygmalion, uh, you know. Right, right, uh, yeah. Now it's, you know. Jimmy Buffett. Look, <laughs> look, I'm old, you know. When you get old, you, you become a curmudgeon and you go, it's not the way it was. But I have to tell you, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say this, but yeah, Madeline Guilford. Does that mm -hmm. mean anything to you? She was Jack Guilford's wife. Right, yeah. And uh, Madeline, we were at Saudi's, this must have been about 15 years ago, and uh, she said, when did you break in? And I said, well, you know, I feel like I was really lucky. I was fortunate because I hit the tail end of the renaissance of the musical theater. Mm -hmm. And she said, when did you start? I said, 1967. <laughs> she said, I got news. She was drunk. She, <laughs> she said, I got news for you. It was lousy even then. So, uh, yeah. so but it was it's all a perspective. But right. it wasn't, you know, we, we in the theater. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you brought up Acting Foolish. Of course, your, your book, is that something that you plan on doing again? Would you write another now, book? I'm writing, a, don't tell anybody, but I'm kind of writing, writing a diary of what's going on, you know. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, I've also written a novel, which is, you know, uh, I'm trying to get published. Gotcha. Uh, I love to write, mm -hmm. so... Um, Hopefully be seeing more of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think, do we have one more question? We have one more one question. question. It's actually a, a really great question. It's by Tyler. Um, he asked if there's a production that you think of that is particularly important in making you who you are today. Hmm. Great question. Hmm. Um, I think Guys and Dolls came at a very pivotal time in my career in which I was kind of lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pretty much didn't know I had a personality of my own until I was about 45 years old. Wow. Uh, it was always very comforting, and still is, mm -hmm. to transfer who I am into an another persona, mm -hmm. which is what's great about being a character actor. Everything kind of came together. Uh, I, I love being surrounded by the beauty of Frank Lesser's music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It was a beautiful production, and I kind of developed a spiritual context when I was 45 years old, and it brought me back. And, uh, and I have to say that even though I've done, this is my seventh play with uh, Jerry Zaks, I've done eight plays with Nathan Lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, Nathan yes. kind of, I owe a lot to Nathan Lane. I, I did four Broadway shows up until the time I was 45, and I've done 10 Broadway shows since. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of it has to do with the generosity of spirit of uh, the great Nathan Lane. Well, I'm so happy to hear that. The Nance yes. was an amazing, I had the best time. <laughs> yes. But um, yes, Lewis, thank you so much for thank joining you for us. Having me. Go check out the tour of Hello Dolly launching in Cleveland at the Playhouse <coughs> Square on September 30th, going to over 25 cities across the country, all star cast. Thank you so much, sir. Go check it out for yourself. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? 
Sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to this interview in a podcast version by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Anna Filofanie of Off-Broadway's A Collective Rage, A Play, and Five Bettys.